Hello everyone, we're going to be looking at this cabinet today and loading it up with six of the Gill brand batteries which are sold by Signature Solar. Now Signature Solar had this cabinet made with some special modifications that make it an excellent choice for a home for your batteries. Let's get into all the details in this video. Here we go. If you're like me and you have a lot of solar energy and you're trying to run your house and garage off the grid, you need a place to store that energy. Now in the past, I have built some very large shelving units for my different battery banks. Now those DIY solutions sure do save money, but they don't look great. At least I haven't done a great job making them look good. Uh, this cabinet, which is sold by Signature Solar, is specifically made to hold six of these Gill brand batteries inside of it. Now they've done a few modifications to make this cabinet really nicely suited for holding the batteries. Let's go through the details. On casters with a lock on it. And here are the keys for that. Going vertically on the left and right sides of the cabinet are two large copper bus bars. These are for paralleling all of your batteries together. So the width of the cabinet is 23 and a half inches. The cabinet depth to include the door is 25 and three quarter. The height of the cabinet off the floor is about 45 and 5 eighths inch. Here's the rubber bushing that you would punch through with your wire to get down to the bus bar. I've removed this side of it so that we could look at the bus bar and you can see the copper and tin plating rounded edges. Inside the cabinet we can see the fiberglass standoffs. Those insulate the bus bars from the frame of the cabinet. We have four larger screws at the top of the bus bar. These are M8 screws and they have flat washers and split washers on them. They are threaded directly into the copper bar. We can see the square nuts and those are in the frame rail so that we can screw the uh, batteries to it to hold them in place. And we're also going to see six smaller screws which are M6 screws and those are for the individual batteries. You can see the shelf material is put on there just so that the batteries can slide in. There's venting on the back and the front. There's also a little vent up here. And here's the other side, which would be, I think this would be the negative side when we put it in. We can see the bonding strap from the door to the frame. So overall, I think this is a really nice construction. So it looks like we are at five millimeters. And this dimension looks like 25 millimeters. So this copper bus bar is about 125 millimeters square if we ignore the rounded corners. I've looked up a few different ampacity charts and I think this is good for about 400 amps. Signature Solar sells this unit for about $500. Now is it worth it for 500 bucks? I'm not sure. Let's run through the numbers and see if you think it's worth it for your own project. Now any of us could probably DIY our own shelving unit. I know that I've DIY'd my own shelving unit several times to hold my batteries, so I know it can be done. But if you were to buy one of these brand new, uh, the lowest that I've seen is about $400 for a cabinet with a locking front door on it. I looked up these bushings and if you were to buy them on Amazon, they're about $4 each or $32 worth of standoffs in the cabinet. This copper bar costs about $80 if you were to buy both of them, about $40 each. Uh, then we probably have, I don't know, let's call it $10 in screws uh, and washers. This is zinc plated screws and washers. So all told, you're a little over $700 to build this entire cabinet if you buy the parts new and want to assemble it yourself. So you're saving about $200 if you buy it as a package from Signature Solar instead of buying the pieces individually. Let's flip it over and take a look at the casters. The cabinet comes with a few accessories. We have six feet of black and six feet of red wire. It says here 25 millimeter square PVC. Then it comes with a little bag of hardware. Inside the bag, we have four ring terminals. These are an open barrel design. I don't actually have the right tool to use these. I use a hydraulic crimper with a closed barrel design. But it does come with four ring terminals if you can use that, if you have the right uh, crimping tool. It also comes with a full set of screws to secure the battery to the server rack. Let's take a look at the foot here. 
We have four swiveling and locking casters. Right now it's locked and the wheel will not turn. And if you unlock it, then the wheel turns for you. It looks like the four corners have been reinforced with a triangular piece of steel to add some rigidity here. And this is an extra washer, kind of rubbery thing where you could punch a wire through there. All right. These things are about 100 pounds. There we go. And again, inside each battery it comes with a set of small cables and a data connection. And here's a little screw. Okay. All right. Where does we go? Uh, Here we go. Okay. Can you put them in any of these holes? Okay. How about the printed one inside? Oh, okay. Wow, that's a good one. Oh, that's okay. I got it. Do you want Daddy to start it for you? You can hold it, though. Go ahead, Eleanor. Yeah, righty tighty. Turn it to the right. Like this? Oh, wrong way. Turn. Yeah, go like that. Good job. Good job. You can do it. Turn, turn, turn. You're doing so good. Yay. Good job. <laughs> another screw, another screw. Oh, wow. You're doing so good holding that. Almost. That's a lot of batteries, Daddy. Good news. The cabinet came with enough screws for all the batteries. <laughs> there were none missing. Good job. Daddy, can you help me put a battery in my car? A battery in your car? Yeah. Okay. There's about a three quarters of an inch gap in between each battery to allow for some airflow. Next I'm going to go through and check the voltage of every battery. I want to make sure that they're within a tenth of a volt of each other before switching them all on in parallel. And we have 52.72 volts. The voltages all came pretty close to each other. The bottom five batteries are brand new and the top one I've played with and it is charged a little bit higher than the rest. Uh, this one is probably 99% state of charge and these might be at 75%. And you can see that here with four LEDs lit and down here just three LEDs on the rest of them. So before I do the parallel wiring I'm going to shut off all the breakers. Each battery came with a set of jumper wires and it looks like the jumper wires are 16 millimeter square PVC cable and they all have crimped on uh, ring terminals. This is an M6 screw. Now that's still a little bit loose right now so that I have some play to bring it over to the bus bars. These are snug, but they're not super tight just yet. Remember the circuit breaker is off right now. Let's 
gonna jump over here to this bus bar. They're snug, but they're not torqued down yet. Now to torque them down, I bought a new screwdriver. It's a torque screwdriver. So I'm gonna bust this open, and that way we make sure that we don't over torque them. Uh, hopefully not strip out this copper with the threads on the copper. I contacted Signature Solar and asked them specifically what the torque specification for the screws on the battery terminals are, their corresponding screw on the bus bar, as well as these larger screws which are made to go off to the charge controllers or inverters. Signature Solar said 8 newton meters for both the screw on the battery and its corresponding screw on the bus bar. So eight newton meters on both. Now eight newton meters would translate into 70.8 inch pounds or 5.9 foot pounds. This is a digital torque screwdriver and I can set it to newton meters. So I set it to exactly 8.00 newton meters and it will start giving a beep when we get very close to that. Looks like this one was stripped out without even putting much force on it. This one here is stripped. All right, so let me just mark that. I'll have to go back and fix that one. Well, all the rest of them torque down fine, except for this one screw. It actually takes a lot of force, and even though this has a rubber grip on it, I was starting to slip uh, just trying to twist that into place. So I'm not really a fan of using just Phillips screws on these bus bars. I would have preferred a hex bolt. There is a hex on these terminals for the battery, but I just kept the one bit in here. I didn't want to switch back and forth bits. So if Signature Solar is watching, I would rather see these screws be a hex head, just like the uh, terminals on the battery have both Phillips and hex as a choice. I'd rather see that over here on the bus bars as well. Here's the M6 screw that was stripped. And in my parts bin, I found one of these serrated flange nuts. Uh, this is a 10 millimeter hex and it fits it. I saw some damage to this thread. So I did run it through a um, little thread repair kit that I have and we'll put this back together. But the hole in the bus bar is stripped out. So I'll need the nut on the back side to hold it in place. All the plastic covers are on the battery terminals, the screws are all torqued down, and we have that nut now on the back side of one of them that stripped out. If I didn't have that particular nut in my collection of things, I could have drilled that out and used a different bolt, like an SAE bolt or something. I can't get any wiggling in here, it's moving the whole cabinet. <laughs> I'm going to be using this 25 amp 48 volt charger that I bought from Signature Solar, and it has some alligator clips on the end. Now remember, all these circuit breakers are off. The charger is now plugged into the wall and it's hooked onto the bus bars. So we're going to start turning on the circuit breakers and you're going to see this uh, turn on and start charging. So you can hear the fan just kicked on and now it's charging. So what I'm going to do is turn on the next four that are all very similar in voltage. The amps are being evenly divided amongst these bottom five batteries. So next what I'll do is just check our voltages. And once the voltage on the bus bar reaches the voltage of this battery, I can turn on the last circuit breaker. 53.45 volts on the bus bar. This is 53.18. So now I can turn this on. So now I'll take these off. 
All the batteries are on and they're charging. Once the charging is done, I'm gonna switch all the batteries off and we'll do the data. I wanna connect the computer up to all these batteries for the data. So I'm just gonna cut a little slot in here. And we'll just cut it like that. And then push this uh, cable through. There we go. And then we should be able to get it in here. And it doesn't matter which side of the port you go on. So plug it in there. And then the other side, I'm gonna plug in to the USB. Now I made this cable in a previous video. This is the manual for the gill batteries and this is where it shows the code for the dip switches. So when we come down here, I'm plugged in and all of these dip switches are currently up. So uh, now let's go into the software for the BMS and we'll click up here for search device. All right, at this point, all the dip switches are in. Now we have all the data connection cables going. And it doesn't matter which side you go into, uh, but I just kind of went from the left to the right, left to the right going down, just so that it looks neat and tidy. No other reason than that. Now we can come up here and we'll plug this in. And we'll go back to search for device. So I just finished resetting all of those and it, after resetting all the circuit breakers, it actually worked. They came up here as different packs and over here pack ID. So it looks like I have packs one, eight, 12. <laughs> Good. I got to get this, uh, I got to get these little ID things figured out. So I was trying to check different IDs up here, uh, finding which battery was associated with which ID, and I wasn't getting anything coming up anymore. And I went to pull this out to see if the connection was bad, and I'm feeling a lot of heat right here, uh, right in this connection. So something must have gotten loose or is bad. So I'm going to take this tape off and find out what's wrong. Well, it turns out this USB adapter is fried. Uh, that's really too bad. I don't know if one week is the normal length of time you get out of those things. Uh, but Signature Solar did send two in the package. So let me hook up the spare and then get back to this, trying to ID all the packs. All right, so the, the manual is correct in the identification structure. The downside is that when it says on, I intuitively think that means up, but it doesn't. It means down, which it's drawn on there. Uh, so this number one is down, 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 up, and so on. There we go. You can actually see pack one, two, three, four, five, six. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Number one, two, three, four, five, six. I successfully got all the batteries to communicate to the computer. So this means from one central point and one cable coming up to the computer, you'll be able to see all the different IDs. One last thing I did was I registered the batteries on Signature Solar's website. This is useful if you need to do a warranty claim. Uh, they have it on record, uh, the serial number that you have. This was by far the fastest battery assembly I've ever done. In less than an hour, I was able to open up everything and install it and torque it all down and have a 30 plus kilowatt hour battery ready to go. It did take a little bit longer for the data, as you saw in the video, but stay tuned for the next videos when we'll capacity test this and hook it up to some inverters and actually get some use out of it. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share.